You're listening. You're listening. You're listening. You're listening to Is Max Feels Max. Is Max. Is Max. Yeah. Who's that? Jim Bowie. And Jim Bowie. Before we start the show. Before we start the show. Before we start the show. We just wanted to say hello. Hello. We know some of you are waiting to be on Ear Snacks. Thank you for your patience. And some of you might want to be. Oh, really? That would be so fun if you wanted to be on Ear Snacks here with us. Because we have a lot of questions. Like, why do I have ten fingers? And is it okay that they are all green right now? Because I was using a blue marker earlier and it doesn't seem um, like they should anyway, be green. If you want to be on the show or find out more, visit earsnacks.org. Earsnacks. I love you. You're the best kid ever. Your snacks. Your snacks with Andrew and Polly. Welcome to Ear Snacks. I'm Andrew. And I'm Polly. And this is the second part of our episode about pajamas. We're thinking about things that are cozy and how to get good rest for your mind and body. Mm-hmm. The coziest thing I can think of are my favorite pajamas. Ooh, what do your favorite pajamas look like, Polly? It's funny you should ask, Andrew. Oh? Because we've got a whole song about them. Oh, really? Coming on bedtime, mama said sleep tight. Read a story, brush your teeth, and flip that nightlight. Coming on bedtime, but you know I don't mind. Cause if we have to go to bed, we're gonna do it right. We're gonna do it right. Yes, if we have to go to bed, we're gonna do it right. Oh, my favorite pajamas, have a talk on them. Have a talk on them. Don't you wish you had some? Just like my favorite pajamas. Have a talk on them. And I will wear them to bed. Yes, I will wear them to bed.
wait, wait a second. No, Polly, Polly, wake up. We still have podcast stuff to do. Polly. <laughs> oh, uh, I guess a little nap never hurt anyone. <sighs> Wait, what? Andrew, Andrew, no, wake up. <gasps> what? Wait, where, where am I? Andrew, wake up. It's podcast. What? Poly- this is a podcast? Yes, this is podcast on podcast. We have a guest on today. We do? We do. We have a very podcasty person. A very podcasty person? Yes, can you guess who I'm thinking of? Maybe it's Mindy Thomas? Ding, ding, ding! You're correct! Winner, winner, chicken dinner! You got it on the first try, Andrew! <laughs> Mindy, today on Ear Snacks, we're talking a lot about pajamas, and I don't know why, but it seems like you would know a lot about pajamas. Is that true? Do you know stuff about pajamas? Well, I am wearing some right now. You are? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Mindy. Which pajamas are you wearing? Well, they're two different pairs of pajamas combined. You mix pajamas? Yeah, they're mixed pajamas. Mixed pajamas? My favorite pajamas that I ever had Mm -hmm. were the pair that I bought with my own money when I was eight years old. Do you remember what they looked like? They were pink sleeveless. It was a nightgown and they had little flowers on them. And it was the most exciting feeling of spending my own money buying clothing for myself. Normally my mom or my grandma would buy me pajamas, but since I spent my own money on them, it just made me feel really grown up. They were my favorite pajamas because they were so special. Mm. Yes. So I had a stuffed bunny that was my favorite stuffed animal that I slept with every night. And I had my mom's fancy Shirley Temple doll that she had kept nice from when she was a kid. So I had that and I would just play with them in bed. And then when my mom would come upstairs, then I would pretend like I was sleeping. Well, did you ever actually get to sleep? No. (laughs) Not even at (laughs) night? You've been awake since you were a child. (laughs) Well, this explains so much (laughs) that you've been awake for decades. I'm just delirious now. (laughs) Do you remember, like, not being able to fall asleep because you were so excited about something? Oh, yes. Actually, I was just telling Andrew, I had always a hard time falling asleep the night before the first day of school. Yeah. I would always be very, very excited. I remember the first night I slept in my bunk bed when I was a kid. My brother and I got a bunk bed. You were the bunk bed? Yeah, I was on top. And I remember the first night, and I thought I didn't sleep at all. And I might have closed my eyes for like a second, but then it was morning. Oh, so the night didn't feel long? Yeah, it felt like like a snap. It is sort of like time traveling. It is. Sleeping. Yeah. Like, especially when you're on a long road trip, if you can fall asleep in the car, that's pretty much the best because you could lose hours of time that way. Yeah, you could. And go distances at the same time. You could. Um, I got an idea for you. Yeah. What? So I came up with this idea called the Incredible Edible Bed. The Incredible Edible Bed. <laughs> Go on. And it is a really, really large slice of bread, the size of a bed, like a mattress. I love bread. <laughs> I love bed. And you sleep on it. And then when you wake up in the morning, it's like toast. And you can just eat the bread bed as you wake up. So you don't have to go get up and go to breakfast. That's perfect. It's time saving, too. It's really convenient. Uh, Question, though, Mindy. Yeah? What happens when you have eaten so much of your bread bed? Your incredible edible bread bed? Yeah, that there's not enough bread to bed on. Well, that's why you get a whole loaf of them. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. So you just get a, a new one for the next day. They're so soft and cozy. So soft and cozy. So if you had one that was human size. You could go to bread. Bed. I'm listening to stuff and it's called Ear Snacks. So, Mindy, yeah. we absolutely love your show on Sirius XM Kids Place Live. The Absolutely Mindy Show. And we love your podcast. Wow in the world. Have you ever talked about pajamas or rest or sleep on Wow in the World? Yeah. We do have an episode about the science of sleep where we found this research that these ultra marathoners. Ultra marathoners? Ultra marathoners. Slept way, way more than regular people. Yeah. And it really helped them in their athletic performance. Wow. Yeah. And they do it while they're running. Wait, they sleep what? while they're running. Sleep. They sleep right. They sleep right. Sleep right. Sleep right. 
How can you run while you're sleeping? I don't know. I'm not a scientist, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> but you play one on podcasts. I do. Well in the world. <laughs> well, we know you're not just an amazing podcaster and an amazing radio host, but you're also a mom. I am. I've got two kids, Rhett and Birdie. In preschool, my daughter Birdie, she convinced me that it was pajama day. And so she went to school in her jams, and we got to school, and it was not pajama day. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Some schools have pajama day? Yeah. You haven't heard of pajama day? Pajama day? Pajama day! Uh, no, what's pajama day? Oh, boy. So pajama day is the day where you wear your pajamas to school. And there are two types of people in this world. There are people that roll out of bed and go to school in the pajamas that they slept in. Mm -hmm. And then there are the people who think we're going to have to wake up in the morning, change out of our existing jams and put on some new jammies. I am a believer that if you're having pajama day, you roll out of bed in the jams that you're wearing. You're committed to authentic jams? Yeah. I just feel like that's the whole point of pajama day is so you don't have to get dressed in the morning. Here's another time-saving trick. I love those. If you are waking up for school or work, mm -hmm. you're a grown-up, and you want to save yourself some time, you just put your clothes on over your jammies, <laughs> and then at the end of the day... All you have to do is take off one layer of clothing and you got your jams on. You'll always be cozy. You are listening to Ish Next with Andrew and Polly. Our four-year-old Izzy started mentioning that he would be interested someday in having a play date that doesn't stop at the end of the night. It just keeps going into the next day and the friend sleeps at our house instead of going home. Have you heard about something like that? Are, are, are you talking about a sleepover, Polly? <gasps> oh, yeah, that's a, a really good name for it. Of course you have a good name for it. Sleepover, pajama hmm. party, slumber party. Yeah, um, so have your kids ever been on a sleepover? We are not a sleepover family because when I used to have sleepovers, there was mm -hmm. no sleep involved. Very little sleep at the sleepover. Yeah, I remember one specific time we're sleeping at my friend Michelle Flynn's house and I was convinced that there was a live turkey in her refrigerator because every 10 or 20 minutes or so, the refrigerator, and I'm not making this up, would gobble. It would be like... <laughs> and I was really scared thinking that there was a live turkey in there that they had somehow brought it home and it wasn't dead yet and they were going to eat it. And the, so I couldn't sleep all night. I was awake the whole night. Michelle oh Flynn goodness. slept like a baby. The next morning, I was like, there is a live turkey in your refrigerator. We carefully opened the door, and there was not. It had flown the coop. Apparently, there was just something else wrong with it. I never slept there again. Mindy, it sounds like staying up late might seem like a lot of fun for a kid. Why would that be a problem? Because the next day... I turned into a monster cranky pants. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no, not a monster cranky pants. Turns out if you don't get enough sleep, mm -hmm. you get all whiny and cranky and you cry over crazy stuff and you insist that you're not tired, but your body and your grownups know that you are. It's like you're living in a dream, only you're awake and things still don't make sense. Yeah. So what do you guys do if you don't have sleepovers? Have you heard of this idea of the sleep under? Sleep under? <gasps> Tell us about it. Okay. So it's when you have a play date and you bring your sleeping bag and you bring your toothbrush and your jammies and you maybe watch a movie before bed and you brush your teeth together and you have a snack before you brush your teeth mm -hmm. um, and you get in your sleeping bag. And then just as you are about to turn out the lights to go to sleep, your grown-ups come and pick you up, take you home to your own bed. Where you can sleep nicely and sleep well, because it's your usual sleeping place. Yeah. I, my kids really, really want to have sleepovers, so I have been floating this idea of the sleep under, and they say, yeah, yeah, that's, gr that's a great idea, except for, the, except for you just stay the whole night. <laughs> I love everything about this, except you don't pick me up. <laughs> well, it sounds like you kind of have the best of both worlds. You can play and have dinner and do after dinner play. And call some radio stations. Call some radio stations. Mm, yeah. Hopefully avoid some crazy turkeys in the fridge. Exactly. 
Well, do you think that your kids will ever be old enough that you could all decide a sleepover is an okay thing for them to do? Yeah, probably as they get a little bit older. Right now, I just kind of like that we're all under the same roof at the end of the day. Let's hear from some more of our friends. What's your name? Gavin. Zoe. Luke. Lucy. Alexander. Where do you live? California. Do you have anything special that helps you get ready to rest? I have a choke pillowcase and sheets and a well blanket. I have lots of stuffed animals that I sleep with in my bed. Mr. Monkey, my stuffed animal. I have my favorite dog one, my favorite cat one, my favorite bunny one. Two favorite bears. Uh, my favorite one is a cute little brown bear wearing a jacket. My puppies and my blanket. I have my a blanket. Puffy one and some soft and bumpy ones. What things can you do or say to yourself to help your body slow down? Lie down and read a book. Walk around with my dog. Boy. You could you could take a slow deep breath in and hold it for two seconds and then out. You're right, we take a big breath, don't we? Can you show me? Two <laughs> <laughs> <Your> breaths. <sighs> like tense up your whole body and then let it go with a slow deep breath. If a friend is upset or uncomfortable, how can you help? Comfort them and care for them. Or I can ask them what I can do to help them. Are you okay? You could say, do you want me to help you? And do you want me to play with you if they don't have anyone to play with? What do you need? Or you could just talk to them and tell them funny stories about your when you were a little kid. Thanks for sharing. Okay, let's check back in on Mindy. Mindy, did you have any interesting dreams when you were a kid that you still remember now? Well... I can't remember my own specifically, but I remember my mom having this dream that she would tell me about that I wished I could get into, about how she won this uh, pig, and she named it Chicken Pie the Pig, and she won it in the seafood section of the grocery store. (laughs) Wait, she won it? There was like a competition in the grocery store? Like a raffle? I guess so. I mean, it was a dream, so who knows? It didn't make a whole lot of sense. It was like with the lobsters. She won this pig, and she named it Chicken Pie. And I've always said if I ever got a pig, I was like, oh, what a great dream. I wish I could have that dream. And that's what I would name my pig is Chicken Pie the pig. (laughs) Well, be careful what you wish for because you might be receiving a pet pig. Yeah. I really hope so. Well, Mindy, I was thinking about another kind of dream that sometimes people talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, people talk about your hopes and dreams. Do you ever remember having any of those when you were a kid? Yeah. Uh, I remember being a kid and hoping that one day I would get to have a radio show of my own. Really? And guess what? What? I'm living the dream, you guys. (laughs) I've got two radio shows. And it still feels like... Pretending. It's your dream come true. Yeah. When I was a little kid, I really, really had this idea of what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I never let go of that dream. I held on to it so tight, and it wasn't always easy, but I was able to make it come true. That's so amazing, Mindy. Um, Why do you think people call that thing a dream, and they call the things in your head a dream well you know how like sometimes when you have a dream people say like oh dreams never come true mostly because they're all weird and and confusing and messed up but Mm. i think that sometimes the dreams that we say out loud when we say them out loud 
they seem a little crazy or a little out of reach or mm -hmm. a little impossible. Yeah, something that couldn't happen. They just seem so far away. Maybe there's so many obstacles to achieving that dream. But I think, you know, a big dream can be reached by little steps trying to get there. So when you have a big dream of something that you want to do or something that you hope to see in the world or something that seems really big, it might just seem like too big or too far out of reach. But if you take every little step to get there, you can reach that dream. Unless your dream is to sneeze with your eyes open, <gasps> that's never going to happen for you. No? Nope. Sorry to say. You cannot sneeze with your eyes open and you can't tickle yourself. Unless your dream are those two things, anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking with us about sleep and dreams and rest for your body and your mind. And your super comfy cow pajamas. And your family and, yeah, your PJs. And my incredible edible bed. The incredible edible bed. Oh, I just remembered one more thing. Did you ever write down your dreams? I think I might have attempted to at one point, but I wasn't too successful at it because... Mm. I would open my eyes from a dream and then think, but I'd want to go back to sleep. And sometimes they go away really quickly. Yeah. I do try to grab them sometimes when I wake up, but they just go right away. Yeah. Yeah, we need dream grabbers. Maybe somebody is having a dream of being an inventor and they'll invent a dream grabber. Yeah, that's what we need. Dream grabbers that'll stick like gum that will stick to your dreams and then bring them into the real world. All right, so listeners out there, we hope that you will let us know if you have any dream-grabbing inventions. Anything um, please, for science. <laughs> yeah. Please don't steal Mindy's bed bread idea because I'm really excited about that. The incredible edible bread bed. Patent pending. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any dreams in your head at night or awake in the day, we'd love to hear about them. Yes, and if you want to have those dreams, you'll have to go to sleep. <laughs> right now, go to bed. That's not a problem for me. <laughs> oh, no, we put Mindy to sleep. It was a tiring interview. <laughs> Good night, Mindy. <laughs> Good night, Andrew and Polly. <laughs> Good night, Cleveland. Good night, Wisconsin. <laughs> Love you guys. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And what's the last thing someone says to you before you go to sleep at night? Uh, we say Shema, prayer that we say before we go to bed. I love you. You're the best kids ever. Sweet dreams. Good night, or you're the best kid ever. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night, Andrew and Polly. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Good night. And that's our show. Thanks for listening to another episode of Ear Snacks. We just thought so much about pajamas. But we still want to know, what do your favorite pajamas look like? What are the last things your family does before going to bed? Are you feeling a little sleepy now? <laughs> we'll say a quiet <sighs> thank you to all our friends. Thank you. For helping us think about pajamas. Thanks to Lucy, Alexander, Sarah Hanna, Tamima Viva, Miriam, and Yitzi Zev. Gavin, Zoe, and Luke. Muchas gracias. And thanks to our pal, Mindy Thomas. Thanks, Mindy. From SiriusXM's Kids Place Live and NPR's podcast, Wow in the World. Wow in the World. If you want to find out more about Ear Snacks or be on the show, visit earsnacks.org. Earsnacks.org. Ear Snacks is made by Andrew and Polly. Thanks for listening.